overflows. Tao overflows, understanding mind and no mind. Look down the ages, Gautam Buddha has never been contradicted by any of his disciples, neither has Mahabir, nor Moses, nor Jesus. There was something in their, in their very words, in their very presence, that convinced you without any efforts of converting you without any effort of converting you you were converted none of the great masters have been missionaries they have never tried to convert anyone but they have converted millions to inner process of transformation. It is a miracle. But the miracle consists of a rested mind, of a mind which is always overflowing energy and is used only once in a while. When I speak to you, I too have to use the mind. When I am sitting in my room, or in the office, in the business place, almost the whole day, I forget all about the mind. I am just a pure silence. And meanwhile, the mind is resting. When I speak to you, those are the only moments when I use the mind. When I am alone, I am utterly alone and there is no need to use the mind. When I say meditation is witnessing, you feel, you understand. However, when I overflow about no mind, it does not sound easy at all. How can it sound easy? Because it is your future possibility. Meditation you have started, it may be in the beginning stages, but you have a certain experience of it that makes you understand me. But, you, but if you can understand meditation, don't be worried at all. Meditation surely leads to no mind, just as every river moves towards the ocean without any map. River moves towards the ocean, but it does not have any map, without any guides. Every river without exception finally reaches to the ocean. Every meditation without exception finally reaches to the state of no mind. No mind is ocean-like. But naturally, when the river is in the mountains, wandering in the mountains and the valleys, it has no idea what the ocean is like. The river cannot even conceive of the existence of ocean but it is moving towards the ocean without any pre-knowledge. But it is moving towards the ocean because water has the intrinsic capacity of always finding the lower places. And oceans are the lowest place. Remember, Rivers are born on the mountains, on the mountain peaks and start moving immediately towards the lower spaces. And finally they are bound to find the ocean. Just the rivers is the process of meditation. It moves upward to higher peaks. You start from the lower and you move to the higher peaks. 
and the ultimate peak is no mind. No mind seems a simple word, but it exactly means enlightenment, liberation, freedom from all bondages, experiences of deathlessness and immortality. Those are big words and I do not want you to be frightened. So I use this simple word, no mind. You know mind. You can conceive of a state when this mind will not be functioning or will be non-functional. When this mind will be non-functional. You have experienced certain moments in despair that mind becomes non-functional. Once this mind is non-functioning, you become part of the mind of the cosmos. But your experience of this non-functioning of the mind is only in the moments of despair, not in the moments of bliss or happiness. Once the mind is non-functioning, you become part of the mind of the cosmos. The universal mind. When you are part of the universal mind, your individual mind functions as a beautiful servant. In the absence of the universal mind, it works as a master. It has recognized the master and it brings news from the universal mind to those who are still chained by the individual minds. So when I am speaking to you, there becomes an immediate connection with the cosmic mind or the universal mind. And from there, that is the origin, original, origin from where the words flow. When I am speaking to you, it is in fact the universe using me or overflowing through me. My words are not my words. They belong to the universal truth. That is their power. That is their charisma. That is their music. That is their magic. Everyone seeks fulfillment in life. However, most of the times he chooses the wrong path because he lacks direction. He feels fulfillment comes through sex or high status or money. He has lost the direction. As a result, we find ourselves super, superfluous and overburdened today. It is not because life in itself is useless. Life is one endless, infinite fulfillment. But we have forgotten the path that leads to that destination to that fulfillment. We simply exist and have nothing to do with life. This is not living. It is just waiting for death. And how can waiting for death be anything but boring? How can it be a moment of joy. I have come here to tell you this. Certainly, there is a way to awaken from the bad dreams you have mistaken for life. The path is always, the path has always been there. The path that leads from darkness to light is eternal. It is there for certain, but we have turned our faces from it. 
I want you to turn your face towards it once again. This path is dharma, religion, as it is loosely translated or understood. It is the means of rekindling, means of rekindling the light within, the path of lighting the lamp within. It is giving direction to man's drifting boat. Mahavir has said, for those being swept away by the rapid current of the world, with its old age and its death, that religion is only the island of safety, the anchor, the destination and the refuge. Are you thirsty for the light that fills life with joy? Do you want to attain the truth that gives man immortality? If so, I invite you to accept my invitation, to accept my invitation for joy, for light, for deathlessness. It is simply a matter of opening your eyes and then you will, in, you will inhabit a new world of light. You do not have to do anything else. You just have to open your eyes. You just have to wake up and look. Indeed, nothing in man has really been extinguished, nor has he really lost direction, but the eyes are closed. The darkness is spreads everywhere and all sense of direction is lost. By shutting his eyes, a man loses everything. By opening the eyes, he becomes a king once again. So this is an invitation from me to open your eyes and come so that you can feel, you can reach to that state, attain to that which is the permanent abode of an awakened one. Enough for now.